One of the things Darren and I will commonly say here on the show is you got to get your soil fertility balanced. Now, if you're a non-farmer and maybe even if you're a farmer, you're probably wondering, what are they talking about? How do you know if a soil fertility program is balanced? We want to talk about that a little bit today. Well, one of the best indications you can have that something's not quite right is if something's not quite right. For example, let's just say that you're looking at corn stalk residue in your field, but it's from three years ago. Why are those corn stalks not breaking down? Chances are we've got something going on in the soil that is out of balance, so that it's just not functioning well. Now, one of those things that we see really commonly could be soil pH. Now, soil pH is just an overall indication that our nutrient balance is off. If our pH is wildly high or low, we've got something wrong there that can be adjusted. And when we have that, we have poor microbial life and poor soil health, and it often leads to poor residue breakdown in the field. So most of the time for soil pH, what we're looking for is we want it to be in the sixes just as a general statement. So 6.3 to 6.8 is oftentimes the ideal pH we want, but just in the sixes is pretty good. Other things that you can see out in fields that would lead you to believe you've got a poor balance of fertility in the soil would be standability issues. We saw a lot of fields again this year where we had plants that were leaning over or falling apart, where right across the road, plants were standing just fine, or in parts of the field, plants were standing just fine, in other parts they were falling over. This is often a nutrient issue in those certain parts of fields, especially when we look at things like potassium. Yeah, so standability, potassium is by far and away the number one nutrient. And when we talk about balance in the soil, the nice thing is on soil tests, we have parts per million of potassium, and that's kind of the old school method, but then there's also base saturation. And what that tells us is the ratio of potassium to calcium, magnesium, sodium, and hydrogen. And so when we start talking about balance in the soil, we want our potassium in that 4% to 8% kind of range. Then it's what we would call balanced in relation to those other nutrients. Well, another thing, if you've got a garden, for example, and your vegetables just don't taste quite right, maybe they're kind of bland, Oftentimes that's a fertility issue too because the nutrients in the plants are, are good for you. Obviously that's why we're eating these foods, but they, they do have an impact in how it's going to taste. So you'll see sometimes certain suppliers or, or certain places that you buy vegetables or fruits from, they just taste better. Well, oftentimes it's higher levels of sulfur and other nutrients in that crop. Yep, sulfur and micronutrients. So you can see almost all these things. Darren will say, hey, it looks this way in the field. And then I usually go to, okay, well, this is what I usually see on the soil test then. And so it, it's kind of that, all right, as a farmer, we're gonna look at stuff, we see, oh, something's wrong. Then usually you either just read the soil test or talk to a fertility expert and they'll tell you, all right, well, it's probably this thing or this thing. And so anyway, when it comes to overall fertilizer balance and fertility balance in a soil, it can certainly vary depending on the crop that a farmer is raising. But we always wanna look at what are the factors out in the field? What are we seeing? But then how does that correlate to the soil test and what can we change to make things better ultimately out in the field. Well, one thing we certainly don't want to see out in fields is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 